All right, let's derive the famous mass spring equations. So here's our setup. Suppose you have a mass that's attached to a spring. Kind of like that, this is a spring. And at the end, we have our mass here. Let's call this M. Then what we want to consider is not the position of the mass, but rather what is called the displacement from the equilibrium position. So suppose L is the equilibrium. Yeah. Then this mass M just bounces back and forth from that equilibrium position. And the displacement, we call this Y of T. So let Y of T to be the displacement from the equilibrium from the equilibrium, which in terms of position, we can write it y as s minus l. And if you think about it, hopefully it makes sense because if the position is at l, so if the mass is at l, then the displacement should be zero. So if S is L, then Y is L minus L, which is zero. Then it turns out Y solves the falling ODE. Then Y of T solves the, what's called mass spring equation. mass spring OD. And I will write it down. It's a bit gibberish, but I will explain all the terms. So the mass spring OD is simply M Y double prime plus gamma Y prime plus K Y equals f of t. So it turns out if you consider this mass of the spring, then the displacement solves this OD. Now, what do all those letters mean? So m is the mass. Gamma is what's called a damping constant. constant. And this is what makes the mass eventually slow down. So think friction. Friction. K is what's called a spring constant. So K is a spring constant. constant. And this is what depends on the material of the spring. So think for a feather spring, the motion is very big, but for a rusty spring, the motion is very small. So material. Spring. And last but not least, F is what's called a forcing term. Let's call it forcing term. Like imagine you like swinging on a swing and you move your feet to accelerate your motion a little bit. That's what's called a forcing term. All right, now that we stated the equation, let's derive it from physical principles. So derivation. Of course, as you may have guessed it, it all starts with Newton's second law. Second 
can law again may the force not be with you but may the force be mass times acceleration force is the total force which we'll talk about mass is given and the acceleration well a of t that is s double prime of t but remember what was y y was s minus l so s is y plus l so you get y plus l double prime and lastly since l is a constant that's the same thing as y double prime so ma already gives you my double prime y double so that was one component of the equation here. And y double prime, and we want to find the other ones. Right. And now the rest is just the study of the force. Of force. And there is not only one force in play, but it turns out there are four forces at play. And let's see where how. Play here. So once again, here's a situation. We have this mass. I can draw a rectangle. Okay, good. So this is the mass. This is the equilibrium L, and that is the displacement. So if you think of it vertically, well, there is a force pushing the mass down, which is gravity. And that's what we call Fg. So we'll always come back to this. So one force is gravity. Of course, the force pulling the string down. And in this case, Fg, is given by mass times gravitational constant, where g is, I think, 9.8 meters per second squared. So, gravitational constant. You think on the moon, it would be uh, much less. That's one. Then, the second force in play, it's one that pulls this mass up, and that's what's called the string force, called Fs. Because think about it, imagine you have this mass, you pull it down, then there's something that wants to pull it up, kind of to make it bounce back. And that is what's called the string force, and that depends on the material of the spring. Force called Fs okay. uh, pulls spring up. And this is by what's called Hooke's law, where Fs is minus Ks, and minus Ks of t if you want. No, in fact, think about it. I mean, the more we pull the uh, mass down, the more it wants to pull it back up. That's why the minus sign in K, again, is the material of the spring. But of course, we want to write this in terms of Y. So S is Y plus T. And so in the end, Fs is minus KY minus KL. That's one thing. And then, of course, think like the mass moving a lot, but interacting with the air. So, of course, there is friction in play as well. So let's see how I can draw it, maybe in red. And this is called FR. FR, again, which again seems to go the other way. 
So there will be a minus sign. So that's called the damping or friction. Damping, friction. So think air resistance. And this is given as follows. So FR is minus, because again, it goes the other way, gamma, which is again, the uh, damping constant. So it depends on the medium. And again, the faster it moves, the more the air resistance. So in fact, it depends on the velocity. So minus gamma y prime. And last but not least, as I mentioned, you could add an extra force, which is sometimes called the external force. So Fx. Again, it could either go up or down. It depends on the situation at hand. In fact, let me maybe draw it going down just to... Can imagine your hand pull stuff down. So Fx, and there's nothing can be really said about it for now. It's just some term F of, F of t. So external force, force Fx. Again, this is given. So some. Uh, function of time. All right, now let's put everything together and see what we get. So step three. So what would we, we have? So force is mass times acceleration. So F is MA. And again, we saw A was MY double prime. The force is, again, the sum of all those things. So gravity, spring, air resistance, and external force. So my double prime, again, it was mg, and then plus, remember, we had this minus ky minus kl, and then resistance was minus gamma y prime and an f of t. Now, as complicated as this looks, it actually simplifies a little bit. And for this, consider the case where the mass is at rest. So let's look at the equilibrium. Or at the resting position, think status quo with no forcing. And let me draw a picture here. So here we have the mass. Mass, and then this is L. Then if there's no forcing and everything is at rest, there are two forces only on that mass, which balance itself out. There has to be balance because the thing is not moving. One is, Gravity, so Fg. And the other one is just the spring force. Because there is no air resistance because it's not moving, and there is no forcing because we're not forcing anything. So two forces at play here. Play. So again, there was gravity which is mg, and there's a string force, which I want to remind you, it's minus ky minus kl. But if you are at rest, then position is l, so there's no displacement, and this simplifies to minus kl. And the whole point is, at rest, Those two forces balance out. 
So FG and FS balance out, out. So in other words, what this means is if you add both of them, you should get zero, zero. And again, this just implies MG minus KL equals zero. So MG equals KL, which you will see is very good news because that means our equation gets satisfied. So remember what we have, my double prime equals mg minus ky minus kl, and then minus was gamma y prime plus f of t. Now, the quantities mg and kl, they cancel out, so they're constant. And if you now put everything on the left-hand side, so all the y terms, you get my double prime plus gamma y prime plus ky equals f of t. And that is all that she wrote. And that's the t, and we derive the mass spring equation. Woo!